Welcome to Principle of Finance. Today we're going to start with the first chapter and the introduction to this course. And one of the questions on many of your minds may be, why am I in this course other than besides the fact that this is a required course for all business students? Um, there are many good reasons why you want to study finance, um, regardless of what your special fields is. For example, you are in the marketing. Uh, in order for you to be to be excellent at your job, you need to know about budget. You need to be able to um, present your market research proposal. And some of you may be working for the financial services industry and you're marketing one of their products. So leverage, uh, finance will help you leverage your knowledge in marketing and apply it both um, within your organization um, or uh, for the financial industry. And if you become a consultant yourself or you have your own marketing firm, obviously you need to understand finance in order to run your own business. If you're an accounting student, the answer seems to be more obvious. Um, accounting and finance are very closely linked. Um, accounting focuses on the preparation of financial statements and finance um, utilize a lot of the information from the, from the financial statements. So, so as an accounting student, it's important for you to understand how your product, the financial statements, will be used by financial analysts, which are the number one um, user um, or client um, for your product. And if you are a management student, uh, again, very important um, in order for you to make good decisions, um, you need to understand the entire picture of the firm. And oftentimes that includes the profitability of the firm, the value of the investment, and um, most of the quantitative matrix of um, and the tools that you will use to measure those quantitative matrix is located it is it located in the area of finance and lastly and also probably mo perhaps most importantly all of you as you become successful in your job you need to start working on uh, problems or opportunities uh, regarding your personal finance you may want to save money to buy a home to get married to travel to retire um all the all these will require um good knowledge um of finance so there are many practical reasons why this class is important. Um, for those of you who are wondering who that hasn't chosen a concentration or a, or a special area that you want to pursue your career in, I want to go over briefly the different careers that, that are available in finance. Um, it's not always just on Wall Street. In fact, finance um, has is used in almost uh, actually absolutely every single organization. So any business, uh, whether or not it's big or small, will require a uh, financial analyst. Uh, larger companies will have treasurers, chief financial officers. So any company will have a, um, a well-functioning finance department if it wants to be successful. Uh, those of you who are more interested in the financial service industry itself, um, one area that you, that you can continue in is an in investment. Um, this is what most people think of when they think about Wall Street. And if you want to become a financial analyst and work on Wall Street, obtaining the CFA, which is Chartered Financial Analyst Destination, will be a very useful um, um, accreditation to earn. Uh, I myself is, is a CFA and I'll be happy to talk to you about the requirements and opportunities of being a CFA. Um, a huge growth area and actually a lot of our alumni from Salem State um, enter into the banking and financial services industry. Um, a lot of them um, enter into financial brokerage firms or they become financial planners. If you're interested in the personal side of finance, uh, one destination that is very useful is the Certified Financial Planner Accreditation. So again, um, I will be happy to explain in further detail what those involve. Um, other areas of finance include risk management. Um, this is a very specialized field and oftentimes requires an advanced degree. Um, another area that uh, a lot of you may be interested in both uh, for personal reason or those of you who are in entrepreneur who are entrepreneur minded uh, will be in real estate. These include property management, valuation, uh, financing, acquisition, uh, property development. Uh, if you are 
want more information, uh, this is a good online resource to check out um, various careers in finance. For the purpose of this class, we are focusing on business finance. So what is business finance? It, ha it is what every single business organization needs. Primarily in business, we are faced with many decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So most of those decisions has to do with how do we spend our money? How do we use our resources most efficiently? And in finance, that translates into a valuation um, approach. So in order for you to value any proposition, and these propositions can be purchasing a stock, bonds, real estate, real assets, or a project, say start a new product line, or start a new business, start a, um, st uh, if you are a business with multiple locations, for example, a restaurant may look at developing or starting a new restaurant. If you are a company that makes different products, for example, uh, your company manufactures um, pasta for sale to the grocery store, you may want to think you may want to consider manufacturing rice um, or quinoa. And those are new projects. So when you are analyzing this new project or you're analyzing which stocks to buy or which uh, real estate property to buy, how do you, what information do you need to make those decisions? And the, the, the information that a financial analyst will require include future cash flows and how much money you need to get the project started. And very importantly, a concept from economics called opportunity cost, meaning that if we don't put the money in this one particular project, what can we use that money for in other areas? So these are the consider these are the factors that we want to take into account when we when we evaluate a um, any business decisions. Um, and in this class, you're going to learn the tool to analyze these factors and also have a quantitative approach so that we can analyze these proposals in an objective way. There are three main types of decisions that we look at in finance. One is the most popular one and the focus of this class, and that is long-term investment. How do, where, and how do we want to invest our resources that is the most beneficial for the firm in the long run? Um, another type of decision is fin long-term financing, which is capital structure decisions. In this type of decisions, the primary focus is where and how do we obtain funding? Should we borrow the money? Should we add another partner to the firm? What is the best way to raise the money we need? And then the last type of decision is working capital management. These are short-term financing decisions. So in this class, principal finance, finance 301 will focus on capital budgeting. And then in a later class, corporate finance, uh, finance 309, we focus on the next two sets of questions. So before we go into the detailed finance part, it's important to also um, have a brief overview of the different forms of business organizations. Um, the most common and most popular form of business organization is sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorships are the easiest and most simple. It's the largest number by, um, by number, but it's the smallest by size in the United States. Um, by definition, a sole proprietorship can have only one owner and therefore by nature is restricted. The size of a sole proprietorship is restricted. The next form of organization that's slightly bigger is a partnership where you can have multiple people join together. Partnerships are most common uh, among professionals. So if you use a dental, dental office, a medical office, a lawyers, accountants, um, most of those uh, professional organizations are formed as partnerships. And you can have most of those are also general partnerships, meaning that everybody participates in the decision making and also share um, in the liability of the business. Another very common form of partnership, particularly among real estate developers, are limited partnerships. In a limited partnership, one general partner remains uh, retains the liability of the of the of the business, but then the other partners, um, these are partners that typically contribute only capital, but are not involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the business, uh, enjoy limited liability. 
and then the largest form by revenue and by employees of business in America is uh, corporations. There are two main types of corporations. C corps is the regular corporation, and um, and is treated as an individual entity. So a C corporation has its own um, tax ID number, and it, it and it has to file its own tax form. So and also from a legal standpoint, it is considered a legal entity in the eyes of the law. Um, an S corporation has special tax status. Um, regardless of either status, corporations enjoy limited liability, meaning that if you are the corporate, if you own shares in the corporation, even though you are a stockholder and legally an owner of the, of the corporation, you are not personally liable for um, the liabilities of the corporation. So for each one of these form of organization, um, you should study the advantages and disadvantages. And the best way to think of the advantages and disadvantage of each form is to um, keep in mind the pros and cons. So when we think about pros and cons, you, you can think of the control, which can be an advantage or a disadvantage. So for a um, so proprietorship, since you are the boss and you're the only boss, you have the most control. Um, on the other hand, as a shareholders of a corporation, you are one shareholders amongst hundreds and thousands of shareholders. Your, in, your ability to control or influence the decision of the corporation will be limited because you are one amongst many. Uh, and then on the other hand, um, liability, or limited liability or unlimited liability is another consideration. Uh, for sole proprietorship and general partner, you will retain full liability of, uh, for actions of the business. Whereas in a limited partnership and a corporation, you are not personally liable for the actions of the business. So the two, as you can see, go hand in hand. The more control you have, the more liability you're responsible for. And then the, another factor that you want to take into account is tax. Uh, for a sole proprietorship or partnership, uh, tax is counted as regular income. Whereas in the case of a corporation, if you have a C-Corp, then you will have um, double tax taxation. So the income of a C-Corp is taxed first one time at the corporate level and then again at the individual level. So those are the pros and cons of um, each form of business ownership. Okay, we'll end the slide here. In the next video, we're gonna go over um, the goals of a financial manager and then um, also the different types of markets um, and the financial theory that governs the overview of this course.